Thank me and Elm and then an Obama game. Michael is one of the happiest and most friendly kids I have ever met. Everywhere I go with Michael, somebody knows him. Michael is always, always a friend to people. Michael White is a fourth grader at Switlick Elementary in Jackson, New Jersey. Michael is the mayor of Switlick. Everybody knows Michael. The way he treats people, he just gets treated the same way right back. It's always so um, interesting to watch people interact with him because their first reaction is to feel such just such sadness, you know, what a terrible story. And then you meet Michael and it's this big smile and this um, joy of life and this um, thankfulness. On August 9th, 2006, when Michael was four years old, he sustained a traumatic brain injury during a car crash with his sister Mackenzie and their grandmother. She went through an intersection and was hit by a truck on the driver's side and a sedan on the passenger side. Nicole's mother was killed. Michael and Mackenzie suffered a long list of injuries and both were in comas. Mackenzie woke up after a week, but Michael was unconscious for months. Even after he woke up, it was weeks before Michael could communicate. There was a very specific moment where Michael woke up. We were in therapy for OT with his OT at the time. She was stretching Michael's arm. And he just went, ow. And we both like stopped. But she looked at him and she said, could you say hi? And he looked right at her and he said, hi. It was very long, it was very drawn out. But um, he said it. So she asked him to say it two more times and he said it two more times. And all three of us were sitting like this, bawling our eyes out because it was the first time he'd spoke anything in months. And um. I knew at that moment he was going to be okay. Thanks to Children's Specialized Hospital, the Whites already had a team in place to help continue Michael's recovery. So you have a team of people that are around you, um, led by a doctor, um, and then a team of uh, occupational therapists, a speech therapist, a physical therapist, and then the team of nurses that are really with them the most. Those nurses also understood that Michael and Mackenzie's TBIs meant altered personalities and special needs. It meant that things would be different, very different, and that the whole family would need to adjust. This one nurse that I don't remember her name, she said, um, the children that you had, you need to grieve those children, you love those children, but you've lost them. They're not, you're not, they're not gonna wake up and ever be those kids again. And I struggled with that for, years and years. I make the best of it. It is what it is. I can't change it. There's nothing I can do to, you know, make him quote unquote normal. He is who he is and he is happy being who he is. Even though Michael was dramatically changed, Nicole and Aaron were committed to making school a part of Michael's new normal. The child receives schooling every day during the course of their treatment. So there's a special education educator. So the transition home, a really critical element of it, is making sure that that child transitions into that school district and they have the supports they need. Look, sometimes the school district's partner and it's great, and sometimes it's a fight every single step of the way. And so part of our ability is to make sure that that parent has access to the resources they need. I had all these people telling me we would love to have him here, but his condition is too severe for him to be in a regular school right now in Jackson. And that completely broke me in pieces because you just, you're just like, why can't my kid be normal? Why can't my kid be okay? Why did this happen to us? Why did this happen to him? Um, so I was like, well, what's the next step? And I'm sure I was not pleasant at, pleasant at all with these people and they were very patient and kind to me. Switlick Elementary agreed to welcome Michael, and soon his circle of support grew wider. You make a para proud. Michael has occupational therapists at school, speech therapists at school, physical therapists at school. He has a para professional that's with him 100% of the time. He has a teacher, and he has an in class support teacher. And then he has all the special teachers like computers and art and gym and all of that, like all the other kids do. I to make good choices. 
The result is a very full day for Michael. He starts with the other fourth graders in Miss Kaklamanis' room. If you've ever seen somebody being bullied in school, it's going to be an A for yes. For the co-teaching in the Jackson School District works with two teachers in a classroom. You have your general ed teacher and your special education teacher. The purpose of the mainstreaming is to include all students in, in a regular setting with regular peers. Michael? Michael! I feel really upset when you leave me out. I really would like you to start playing with me. Oh, thank you. Wow, look, an iMessage totally changed things. I told him how I was feeling, and he finally threw me the ball. Including Michael in the fourth grade classroom is easy. Um, it really is because everybody wants to be his friend. The, the children are very passionate, um, and they're warm-hearted to Michael's situation. And I think uh, Michael's parents have done an excellent job informing um, his peers and the community about Michael's disability. You wanna help me tell Emily that she can't come to my party? Yeah. Okay. That's a great idea. Yeah, he's gonna love that part. They make it look easy, but it takes a lot of planning to include Michael in the mainstream fourth grade classroom. Um, the kids are going to continue doing their research projects. Right. Um, everyone's up to date with the facts and their sources. We've done our research. Uh, has Michael been able to do yes. the same? Yes. Michael, uh, we took the same exact uh, graphic organizer and Michael chose his country. Michael had picked Australia to research. He's filling out the same um, form okay. that all the other students are filling out. What he's going to do is we pulled some pictures and graphics. So we're not, yeah, we, don't, we shouldn't do the outline. That's no. It's going to be a little bit too complex. The outlines, right, exactly. So we're going to use pictures out. and then simple sentences. Michael gets a lot of good social interaction and content knowledge from his time in Ms. Kaklamanis' class. But because of his brain injury, he needs extra help in basic skills like reading and writing. So Michael also spends a portion of his day in small group pullout instruction. Michael is mainstreamed for science, social studies, and writing. Uh, and then he will be in the pullout classroom. Um, that's a classroom that contains um, six other students for both literacy and math. Michael! I like Michael. He's my big He... He was a big, fat caterpillar. <laughs> Michael is not reading on a regular fourth grade level. Michael is at, I would say, a mid to end kindergarten level. But the skills that he has acquired and learned throughout the last few years have been wonderful. When I started with Michael two years ago, Michael was well aware of uh, the alphabet and letter sounds, but blending and phonics and writing or constructing sentences was a real struggle. So words such as ship or chunk, he often confuses. So that's where I would work also with uh, Michael's speech teacher to come up with strategies to help him with the sh and the ch sounds. In addition to collaborating with Ms. McGee, Michael's speech therapist also works with him one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to do our B sound at the end of words today. We're going to make sure our lips are coming together and we're not using our teeth on our lips. And then we're going to record. Yeah, that's not the correct way, right? We have to put our lips together. Primarily, we've been working on his articulation errors. So basically, Michael doesn't always remember to articulate his sounds um, correctly all the time. Therefore, there's a breakdown in communication. Okay, let's try this word, rhubarb. We've got two B sounds, so we've really got to put our lips together twice, okay? Rhubarb. Record. Rhubarb. Double B there, and you still did a great job with those B sounds. Rhubarb. How was that? Gone. Awesome. When I first started working with him, he did struggle with communication. A lot of people did have difficulty understanding mm -hmm. him. Within the last year, he really wow. has made significant progress with his speech production. So that means that as far as social skills and socializing with his peers, he'll be able to interact better with them and be able to have more activities that he can participate in. 
To work on physical strengthening, Michael spends time each afternoon doing exercises with his physical therapist. Pick your foot all the way up, good. And now the other one, good. These activities are designed to strengthen Michael's muscles, improve his coordination, and push him toward greater physical independence. Try it again. Get your body ready. Are you leaning on the walker? Lean yes, you are. Come forward just a smidge, because I know you're not using your muscles right now. There you go. Through all of this is Debbie, Michael's dedicated paraprofessional. I'm his personal paraprofessional, so I pretty much start with him from the minute the bus pulls up to the minute the bus pulls away. He's like a child to me. He's almost like one of mine. I've been with him since first grade. He's very much a part of my life, even outside of school. All right, we're gonna do Michael's <laughs> changed my life just because he go, trained me how to treat one, people. Right? And Debbie okay, isn't the only one grateful to have Michael oh, around. Oh, long is so bad. Being Michael's teacher is the most rewarding experience. Um, for myself, for the last 10 years, I've never had a student like Michael before. And watching him over the years um, progress into just a spunky, smart, um, silly young boy. It's just very rewarding. Mike, do you, do you like homework? And You do? Really? Really? <laughs> Honestly, my hopes and dreams for him have not changed at all. Not one bit. He has done everything I've ever dreamed he would. The way I look at it is, he had his first word, and then he had his first word. And he had his first step, but then he had his first step. And it was the second time that he did everything that made me appreciate everything so much more. <laughs> Just the other day, I went in with his laundry and I said, how are you today? And he went, oh, I love my life, I'm really happy. Who says that unless you really, truly are? And he really, truly is.